All right, let's begin here then. The SACP is holding its uh, inaugural annual memorial lecture of uh, the late struggle icon Ruth First at uh, the Johannesburg City Hall. The Secretary General of the party, Solima Pela, is now delivering the lecture. Let's listen in then. Where in simpler terms, the unequal power relations in society in class terms between the rich and the poor it's a reflection of what Eduardo Galeano spoke about in Latin America. Whilst we are crying of inflation, high food prices, high energy costs, high cost of living, the rich only say so in solidarity. They never really feel the pinch. The working class can barely survive. Comrade Amos was saying this. The working class can barely live. Children die of malnutrition. And therefore, we cannot have a country where other people die of hunger, why other people are dying of overeating. Something is not right, it has to be fixed. We therefore need to deal with this food crisis in our country in the same context as we are dealing with others that Comrade Joel Legit and the cause competing priorities. We need to make the job crisis one of the most immediate national crises to attend to. And therefore, government cannot be pandering to the interest of business on meeting their demands on social compact. They must just impose prescribed assets and tax the profits of the rich in order to look after society. We must not allow the public to pay the debt of business exploitation using public funds. We must bring on board the role of public economy. Several people have said to me, no, you are anti-business. We live in a capitalist country. Business can exist, it cannot be dominant over public interest. Now we have a problem where business controls government and government cannot look after the people. The primary task and mandate of government is to look for, uh, after the public, to service the public, not to service business. Now, South African business want government to service it. Every law it must be made to suit the interest of business. I can even tell you that this week, in my other unpaid category, deployment of the Communist Party, with the Financial Sector Transformation Council, in which I serve on behalf of Financial Sector Campaigns Coalition, which was set up by the Communist Party with other organizations. We were confronted by an arrogant group of business leaders from the finance sector who basically threatened me. And I took very serious exception to that. I indicated that to them in the meeting. Basically say, look, you can't leave the financial sector transformation council because we are politically exposed. I've been politically exposed for more than 20 years. It's actually a threat. We are looking after you. Yes, look after me. There's no problem with that. But if that's the method that they use to intimidate leaders of our movement, to intimidate leaders in government, they can go to the nearest hell. I will never be intimidated by big effort. That's the core of financial sector, the so-called trade associations. The insurance, the insurance groups, the finance group, the banks, and everyone else. And unfortunately, and I must say this, they brought 
a bigger delegation of black representatives to come and tell me that. I really felt offended by that. But I'll continue that partly in the other side. But business, big business, in particular finance capital in this country, must shape up or ship out. It's important, comrade, that public economy must take responsibility for job creation and food security of the nation and never leave this thing to the market. We must roll out the Universal Basic Income Grant as a matter of agency. And if we don't have the money, we tax the rich. We must repurpose public works mandate to respond to the immediate challenges of no jobs and poor infrastructure in our country rather than continue the process of tenderization. You know, Mama Moon, you started a very good program in the Communist Party and you did that program also in government of fixing potholes. Few years ago you were fixing potholes in the Val as the Communist Party. No one was looking, was saying that the potholes are bad. You were doing it not for the public. In Sharpville, all over, you launched this campaign to fix potholes and to protect public infrastructure as the Communist Party. You did the same again in government. Now this program has been rolled out nationally. As it has been rolled out nationally, it's tenderized. What is the problem with tenders in, in this country and this government? In the midst of massive unemployment, we must repurpose public works system in our country. Crime has become an acute crisis and needs urgent attention in our communities. But I must indicate, comrades, we don't agree necessarily with the fact that because we've got a problem of crime, therefore Becky Kale must go. We don't agree with that. Because the people who are saying a tangible solution on the table. We want to organize our communities to defend themselves. We want austerity measures to stop so that the police can have enough resources to protect our communities. Where does the individual come in there? The individual doesn't arise. It's the system. We must deal with the system. I agree with you, Minela, on the system. We must deal with the system. The system that denies us resources to, to make sure that the police can service our communities. The system that can protect and make sure that even the community policing forums have resources in our communities. This is what we need. I can tell you, I've listened to this, uh, particularly the, the opposition parties. And we in the movement should not have an agenda driven by the interests of opposition parties who cannot follow the priorities of our country. They want to create a different agenda so that we are defocused and not able to lead our country properly. We need to deal with crime as a matter of agency. And we need to address the ongoing energy crisis and the crisis at ESCOM. And stop ESCOM from having these so-called selected load reduction programs in African communities. Marisawa, I don't know if, if he's present, he's our district secretary in my district, uh, Minasho. In his world, he's a cancer. He has got a serious problem. ESCOM has introduced 48 hour reduc load reduction program in the community. When they finish this 48 hour re uh, load reduction, they implement two hours load shedding after that five hour load reduction. And this load reduction is discriminator. They've been asking the ESCOM leadership to go and talk to the community. They don't want to go to the community. The DA led coalition says this is an ESCOM matter. 
This is what happens when you play with political power. No one now is able to take responsibility. And this program, sometimes they black out the township. Comrade Alex doesn't agree with this notion of blackout because scientifically it's load reduction. But in the township, Comrade Alex, there's no load reduction. It's black out. There's nothing at all for days and days. The same now what is happening in the Binoni region. So this issue must be attended to of energy crisis as a matter of priority. We also need, in the same breath, as we are resolving all these different crises and competing priorities, call all our parliamentarians to focus themselves. The parliamentarians are paid by our money, taxpayers' money. Sometimes when they speak, they create an impression that only ANC parliamentarians are paid by taxpayers and they are not paid by taxpayers' money. We need accountability of all parliamentarians and focus of their work. These acute problems that we are highlighting, food security in this country, food insecurity as a crisis, energy crisis, crime crisis, all of this requires the attention of parliament. Not what we have been seeing recently, a defocus, which seeks also to defocus the national agenda in this country. The Alliance movement must not allow itself to be defocused. The same with the executive. It must have its focus right. Makes appropriate interventions using the laws of this country. We have got enough space politically to make appropriate interventions. It should not take too long for us to respond to problems of people without food, people without water. This requires that executive decision making must also change. Not change in the replacement of the different factions in the movement. We don't buy that as the Communist Party. In any case, we also do not buy this thing that every other time in any province, when there's a new leadership of, of the ANC in province, in the region, even national, there must be complete leadership change in government. We don't accept that. Thing. Why are we ourselves destabilizing ourselves and destabilizing governance as the African National Congress or the Alliance? We reject that with the contempt that it deserves as the Communist Party. And that is why, Minashu, even this thing that Comrade Khabib is raising, he's raising it from a youth perspective. But I agree with him. There should be no basis upon which some comrade will try and think that the ANC office is used for ascension to political power in government. That thing has to come to an end. And we must therefore reject this notion that everyone who gets elected, they think the most immediate thing is to change governance. So this is unacceptable, comrade. We believe that equally, all of us must focus. The priorities that we are highlighting, the Communist Party must work in our structures, in our communities, to make sure that we attend to them. The security crisis is not only a problem of the police. The police are at the front line, under-resourced, victimized by criminals, who are staying in our communities. So we need the community to come together and work with the police and root out even corrupt elements because these criminals are able to pay off individuals in the system. The entire security establishment must actually become more vigilant. I was receiving reports yesterday about the Community Policing Forum program in one province. Because of time, I'm not going to share the, the, the detail, but the bottom line is that they pick up a kumbi, a 23-seater of some sort, 
full of pregnant women from one foreign or neighboring country. It's a problem. How did this Kumbi pass our borders like that? No observation. It's picked up by the CPF. Well, it's good that the CPF picks it up because they are on duty. The drug syndicates and problems in our communities must be addressed. The youth movement must come up and confront these drug syndicates in our communities and crime in general and not only leave this problem to the police. Ruth First, when she was just 14, joined the Young Left Wing Book Club, where she started a revolutionary activism in the youth movement. Young people must begin to set up reading clubs, and especially left-wing reading clubs. It will be important that as we do so, we also make sure that the Young Communist League in particular and the PYA in general, if you look into the life of Ruth First, who was an A student and a student activist, she did not become an activist and fail in academic programs. She excelled in both. We must deal with this misnomer that to be a student activist, you must fail. You must always be extended to pass your, 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 your degrees or your programs. Student activists must pass, must lead by example, must show what Ruth First has done. She excelled in both. So our Young Communist League in particular must continue to make education fashionable and making sure that young people are able to learn and we assist our communities. Our Young Communist League branch at the University of Northwest was recognized by our 15th Congress for service to the community. They assist students to prepare for university and to prepare for academic content. So they don't leave this only to the lectures. Young Communist League in the VAR used to do this program. Comrade Law, I don't know, I see the, 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 the new leadership of the region, of the district. At that time, Comrade Silo was in charge in the Communist Party, working with our Young Communist League in the VAR. And their program was actually even recognized by the Minister of Basic Education. Because there they were assisting students in high school, especially matriculants, to prepare for matric and to pass well. Because we know in this country, until we change things, matric is like the key license without which all suffers. That system has to change, by the way. And we're not saying that we must lower the standards. But the system cannot be that only when you have attained metric. You need to attain metric and, and, and do more. But we also need a comprehensive education that can also train its skills so that we don't produce pass rates of people who cannot be employed. And this can be done through initiatives of the Communist Party in our communities. In other words, the change that we require, we must start it ourselves. We should not wait for government or any other institution to do it for us. Ruth First was an excellent symbol of a diligent student. She was an author as well. She wrote several books revolutionary books. She was an editor or a journalist. She led, the SACP led group of the Guardian newspapers. These were SACP group of newspapers that were independent. Not SACP newspapers like Umsebenz. Umsebenz remained as a typical SACP newsletter. But the garden group of newspapers, including the New Age, that, uh, as we know, was lit later on appropriated 
by the Guptas. They used our name, the name of our old newspaper. It was an SNCP newspaper, Inkuleg and others. These were the garden group of newspapers under the leadership of the Communist Party. She was a journalist there. They were independent newspapers. She was a journalist there, an editor of most of these titles. She worked well also at the international level. And at international level, as you know, she was burnt in Kenya by the arrogant regime there because she authored a book that was critical of the ongoing system after liberation of Kenya. And she went to Mozambique where she received international solidarity and worked at the Eduardo Montana University at the Center for African Studies. That's where she was killed by the this assassination squad of the apartheid regime, the heat squad. She also worked very strongly with the trade union movement. In the trade union movement, for instance, she collaborated extensively with the National Union of Mine Workers and the Association of Mine Workers and Construction. And in this effort, she dedicated herself deeply to the living condition of the mine workers. She understood the crisis that had befallen South African mine workers with the development of capitalism in, in this country through the mining industry. She continued her work in this regard, and as a journalist writing specifically on issues of workers, including a special commitment to write about farm workers. Jose, she used to produce no less than 15 articles a week. I don't know how many journalists can do that today. She was an amazing journalist. She was not just doing, uh, I, heard, I heard that uh, th 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 there's an affirmation that uh, there are journalists who can do that. I'm a journalist by marriage, by the way, so there's no crisis there. <laughs> but I know how difficult journalism is. I think in the context of her work in the mines, we must pay tribute as the Communist Party, also in our own right. We pay tribute to all those mine workers who lost their lives 10 years ago on the 16th of August in Marikan. We want to express our solidarity with all those who were victims, those who were attacked and displaced, and all the women workers who were even raped and offended, assaulted in different forms. We also want to indicate that that tragedy should not happen in a democracy and should never be repeated in this country. At the same time, we also want to indicate that the mind bosses must take full responsibility for that disaster without exonerating government itself. And we call on government to meet its obligations from the commission to pay the victims urgently to make sure that the children of the victims are put in schools are trained so that they can have sustainable livelihoods. But as we do so, comrades, we should not allow big capital to walk free out of this. This was caused by the mining bosses. The mining bosses divided workers. They decided to pay other workers particular category of wage against the other. 
they divided the trade union movement. We are happy that today our unions, the NUM and AMCO, are working together and they've demonstrated commitment in joint action when they confronted Sibani Steel Waters. This process must continue. The unity of workers. Of course, mining bosses continue to undermine collective bargaining. And this was demonstrated by Implat, Impala Platinum, that unilaterally offered discriminatory wage increases for one section of the workers against the other, or at the exclusion of the other categories. We need, therefore, systematically to adapt our Labor Relations Act. That should not allow big capital or the bosses to treat workers in this form. You know, Comrade Munyen, the bosses can allow workers to have a two-month strike because they can live on profits that they exploited from the same workers. But workers cannot afford that. If the bosses abuse the Labor Relations Act, we must change the Labor Relations Act in favor of the exploited, the victims, the workers. Sometimes I feel that Comrade also feels that it is incorrect to, 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 to change the Labor Relations Act. The Labor Relations Act must be adaptable to the betterment of the workers and poor all the time, not to the interest of business. And that is why, in this regard, government must lead by example. We have spoken at length about government not meeting some of its own obligations in the previous negotiations with workers. And this has now gone into the private sector. Big capital has become too disdainful to the workers. They forget that these are the real producers of wealth. Without workers, there's no production. Even when you use the machine, the machine used human intelligence, is developed by human beings. But they have gone on to undermine work and labor, workers, to, to an extent that actually is bordering on disrespect for human rights. The Communist Party, therefore, accept and support Kosatuma's action against the high cost of living that is coming on the 24th of August, this coming Wednesday. We want all our structures and our members to participate in these matches because the high crisis of unemployment in our country, of poverty, and deepening inequality, energy crisis, and many other acute problems that we have demonstrated here today. It's equally the responsibility of capital. And therefore, workers, as they go out to the streets, the Communist Party must be with them. We are happy as well that SAFTU has resolved to embark on similar action on same issues. This is another opportunity for the trade union movement to forge unity in action and develop it to greater heights, this unity in action. We will at all times as the Communist Party support the wider trade union movement and worker unity and their struggles. Ruth First, who was the leader and national secretary of our Young Communist League, was a revolutionary, incomplete. And I guess today, if she were alive without a prophecy, she will join the struggles of the workers. So we must be found where, our struggle, where the working class struggles are and participate in them. At the same time, we are faced with this high cost of living in our country based on other factors beyond local factors, international reasons. 
The world is today in a very precarious situation because of the U.S. war mongering and their allies in NATO. The problem, for instance, in Ukraine, where a lot of grains come from, Russia and Ukraine, when the first grains were allowed to be shipped out of Ukraine, they did not go to any other part of the world except Europe. Europe only knows itself and its own petty self-interest. Only this week we were told the first tons of ships of grains were now leaving to Africa and perhaps Middle East and Latin American countries, the third world. We need to change the way that international capital looks at us by affirming our own independence by taking charge of our own institutions as African organizations and countries. But it will be insufficient indeed to talk about Ruth First without delving into the international situation given the role that she played in that regard. But I won't delve too much in that because of time. All we need to indicate is that in a memory, we want as the Communist Party to build a powerful socialist movement of, of the workers and poor and use this as a platform of struggle to achieve, amongst others, the following key issues. One, to end all forms of gender-based discrimination, violence and killing, and to end gender inequality, the unequal power relation between men and women to strengthen community safety, ensuring that all people, regardless of their gender, particularly women and girls and children, can walk freely in our streets and feel protected. It's such shameful that we have to talk about protecting other human beings as human beings because we have become a danger to our own, to ourselves as society, as human beings. And therefore, we are calling for the right to work of all South Africans to end the crisis of high-level unemployment in our country. The right to work must be the first task to confront unemployment in our country. To do so, we cannot leave this to the hands of capital. The public sector, the state, the government must take responsibility for this. We are also calling for the continued transformation of the financial sector. This sector, it's where money is in our economy. This sector is worth a lot of money in trillions. Yes, the country is in crisis. Something is not right. Mtembo, I know you are in this sector, the finance sector, upcoming. But this sector is so disdainful to black institutions. That is why we say to government, in particular to the Reserve Bank, We must push for public banking system in our country, starting with the first state bank that we must establish and build an environment that is conducive for the establishment of cooperative banks that can thrive and grow in our country and become the pillar of a transformed financial sector. At the moment, leaving it to these so-called oligarchs in the financial sector, we won't see any financial transformation. People in the, in the villages, in the townships, will never ever be funded for their small businesses because they are never understood by these big oligarchs. That is why, for instance, the Reserve Bank has a particular mandate and role to play. First, to accept its role for expansion of its mandate, 
This must be imposed by the executive. The authority of the Reserve Bank rests with the Minister of, the, of, of, of Finance. It's in the Constitution. He must give clear directives and mandate about what this institution should do. And therefore, the Reserve Bank must change both monetary policy as well as targeting employment creation to tackle unemployment in our country as one of its core mandates. We can't say unemployment is a crisis. Yes, we attend to it like any other problem. Microeconomic policy review must ensure that both monetary, fiscal, as well as international trade policies support industrialization in our country towards establishing the right to work for all. But the right to work for all and its affirmation should not wait until that time when we have industrialization. It should start henceforth. Government must launch this program to enlist all South Africans to have a right to work. This should not be the bourgeois notion of the right to work campaign. Because in other bourgeois countries they do it. But we are not even doing what bourgeois countries are doing. We can do more and better in this regard. And therefore, all the master plans in government, particularly that deals with production or development of production, industrialization, must be linked up or streamlined to deal with underdevelopment and uneven development in our country to tackle this high-level crisis of unemployment in our country. It's always a misnomer, this thing, that an, an under the, or a, a so underdeveloped country like ours, underdeveloped in a sense that the hinterland of our country, the villages, the rural areas, the former homelands, when you are there, they don't reflect the development you see in, in, the, in, the, in, in the provinces like Houghton, for instance, or the Western Cape particularly Cape Town region. There's underdevelopment in our country. So to tackle this, we need government to understand that the current master plans that they've had are making a slow dent to the crisis that we face. In other words, if we use the existing framework, we need 100 years to achieve what we are talking about. Now, it's impossible China achieved this and major achievements in less than 30 years because they understood the developmental role of the state. We can learn from that. We are not saying let's be Chinese. We can learn from what they did that worked well for their country. We want the extension still of this social relief of distress grant and the improvement on this uh, social distress grant. Because we have seen that after April, the payments fell down, and yet inflation rose up. So there's misnomer in planning and implementation. Inflation rises, we cut the grant all we lower the implementation of the grant. The grant must be implemented. And please, let's not be talking too much about where the money comes from. There's too much money in this country. This is a different debate that I'm willing to have publicly with anyone, business leaders, government leaders, in public. There's too much money in this country. And this is not to say, Minashur, this is not populism. There's too much money in this country. Our money is not deployed where it is appropriate. Trillions of our money, more than 10 trillion of our money here in this country, owned by the oligarchs in the finance sector, they are deploying it all over the world except in South Africa. Who's going to develop South Africa when our money goes away? Money of South African workers. Just do a simple thing in terms of because you are in this uh, 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 sector of pension funds and others. 
just do a simple thing of where this money, South African pension funds money across the industry, not just only of public sector workers in the PIC, across all the industry of all South African workers where this money is deployed. If it's deployed in South Africa, it's deployed in Sante and Cape Town, building infrastructure there for the rich. Nothing for the poor. Nothing in, in, in the so-called homeland areas, former homeland areas. The rural hinterland of our country, neglected by development of the money of people who have been sapped of their labor from those areas. Who came to build these big cities? There's too much money. But this money is allowed freely to leave the borders of this country, to be deployed by people who do not care about the well-being of everyone in this country except themselves and their pockets. This attitude has to change. We need to accelerate land reform and create a capable developmental state but dressed by popular power. Comrade Munyen, the chairperson of COSATU, is a director in government. We need people like him and other trade unionists who are in government to lead the developmental nature and content of the state so that it is them who must say this is how we need to do it for the poor, for the working class. All of the other public servants we need hands on deck for implementation of government programs if we are to ever implement the developmental state or its notion. But finally at the core, it will rely on government's planning and financing and distribution of resources to make it possible. We must continue our fight against state capture and corruption in society and inside, in, even inside our own movement. This must go hand in hand in fighting factionalism, revisionism, as well as neoliberalism, among other chief deviations from the revolutionary values of our struggle for freedom. And therefore, as we deal with this thing, the economic problems that we face today would have to be addressed. This includes the problem of load shedding that has now become endemic in our country. One thing that we must see in this process of load shedding is the destruction of public infrastructure. The Communist Party must lead the defense of public infrastructure anywhere against anyone else. No one should destroy public infrastructure and walk away freely in our communities. You must be the frontline soldiers to defend our own development and the gains of our revolution. Therefore, in closing, we equally need the Reserve Bank. It has to play a critical role, the Reserve Bank. At the moment, we have heard that New York and Peter Nosta Square in London and Euronex in Amsterdam uh, and Paris, all of that, the financial capitals of the world, are encircling us to leave us with no option for policy that can respond to our people. I can tell you, before the, the South African Reserve Bank Monetary Policy Committee meets, the MPC that deals with uh, interest rates, normally they, they, they deal with several other issues, but their main thing is the monetary policy, policy of money. Monetary is, is money policy, the MPC. I can tell you, if they meet every a month before the IMF and the World Bank, once you have read what the IMF says or the World Bank says, that MPC will follow. What we need 
It's a drastic change of the composition of the MPC. So it can respond to the needs of the people. Have low interest rates, have differentiated interest rates for cooperatives and SMMEs in the country, cannot have the same approach of Sibani still water if you give them interest uh, alone with particular interest rate, you give them the same as you give a cooperative of women trying to make a living in David. But ours is a one size fits all. This must change. But when you read what the prescripts of the IMF and the World Bank say about their outlook on South Africa, the following month or so, I can challenge Comrade Lesija Kanyaku. We can go and see it. He can bring the documents. I'll bring the documents. We can go and search for them in public. They are available. These are public documents. Go and compare. Now we need the Reserve Bank. That is a South African Reserve Bank. That serves the interests of the people of this country and respond to the local needs of the people. With this comrade, we want to say, in honor of Comrade Ruth First, let's go and implement the outcomes of our 15th Congress of the SACP in building this massive socialist movement of the workers and poor. We have already started some work, but our work should not be like the work in government. We have been to Matibidi already with the delegation of the Central Committee. It's a village in Pumala, nominated by our party structure there. We have met with the people there. As we were leaving, we were confronted by another party branch not far from Matibidi which won the best rural branch of the Communist Party in Pumala. They said we are also ready. We have started working with them. We are going to Kwaakwa and other places. In Kwaakwa and other places where we have identified these villages and the townships are following as well. We are launching community shops in townships owned by the people for themselves. We are taking back the economy to the hands of the people. We are not demanding that so and so must do so and we are doing nothing about it. We want big business to join us to fund community development in real terms. But we are not going to wait for anyone. We will do it for ourselves. But those with obligations, including government, we will insist that their obligations are met to the needs of the people. So this program of the Communist Party, it's a broad program. And I want to implore on Communist Party cadres, this is not a sectarian program. We are not going to own this program. It's a program of the working class. It's a program of our communities. As we build Debo Kopali is here, happy birthday, Comrade Debo. We are still to set up our committees next this weekend. We are even our central committee since Congress. He's leading our team in the cooperative movement already. We are setting up community alternative system of sustainability and reliance. You can call that cooperatives if you like but they are more than that. And we are not excluding any other thing that can enrich this process in our communities. That is why this process is not a tender process. No tenders. We are pulling together what is available in our communities to sustain ourselves, self-reliance. Let's go and embed our activism, therefore, amongst the people to change their living conditions for the better and serve the people wholeheartedly and selflessly. We say all and everything for the people and nothing against them. We must utilize the memory of Comrade Ruth First 
to rebuild a strong women's movement in our country, to reconnect the struggles of women of our country with the values of the liberation movement. We must relink this isolation between us and the people. Comrade Muralan, I saw the, the masses in action in Yusuf Dadu, the West Rand. The things that they were saying when the government led by uh, the Premier here, Comrade Dave Makura and Becky Tell, and the National Commissioner of the Police, who did very well, by the way, all of them, including government, to respond to that community with that dignity and the restraint. Because the community was extremely agitated with the killing of those, I mean, the, the rape of those young girls. When I saw how the masses responded, the issues they raised are the issues we were discussing when we did local government elections work there. They have not changed. The core of them were the same. Why should these issues remain the same? Our presence there, our job, my comrades, is not just to raise problems, but to respond on the problems. That's the task of the party structures. Those problems have been there, including these challenges of the Zama Zamas. The Zama Zama challenge, it's a problem across the country. Even when we're in Pumalanga and Leidenberg, we were told about that, that there are problems of Zama Zamas there. So we have to deal with this thing and create a possibility where ultimately, even the manner in which we create legislation, our legislation must benefit the people and not make our people criminals on survivalism mode of production. This is not to say that Zama Zama is the right way to survive. But in one of the village areas, they said, no, they can't even collect sand in the, in the, in, in the, in the rivers. Because to collect sand, that they build the entire rural communities, digging sand and everything else to create bricks and everything else, they are told that now it, it falls under some section in mining. You need to apply. I mean, really? This is poor legislation. And members of parliament are focusing on something else. They want President Ramaphosa gone, irrespective of the challenges facing the people of this country. Because that's their petty interest. All right, that is uh, the SACP's uh, Solima Paila, who is uh, speaking at uh, the party's um, uh, memorial lecture that is uh, in honor of uh, Ruth First, saying that we acknowledge uh, the struggle of uh, women, but also addressing the issue of uh, the high cost of living, saying the working class can barely survive and that they are struggling and say we must deal with the system that denies us resources. Some of the words coming from uh, Solima Paila.